Hello and welcome to ILTV's Evening Update. I'm Aaron Porras here with the latest news from Israel. Turkey's interior minister Soylu said that the attacker has not yet been identified and is still at large. He said, quote, Our security forces have started the necessary operations. God willing, he will be caught in a short period of time, end quote. It was just an hour into 2017 when Istanbul's popular Reyna nightclub was victim to a lone gunman's terrorist shooting spree. Over 39 people are confirmed dead, with nearly 70 people injured. 19-year-old Israeli Lian Zair Nasser was among those killed by the shooter's random targeting inside the club. Another Israeli woman, who was believed to be in Nasser's party, was injured. Three of the injured remain in critical condition. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu took time out of Sunday's weekly cabinet meeting to address the attack and others like it. He said, quote, The fight against terror is a global struggle. Over the weekend, Chancellor Merkel said what we've been saying for years, that the greatest threat to the future of the world comes from the side of radical Islam. Of course, this terror continues to strike. We saw over the weekend, just yesterday, another deadly attack in Turkey. We send condolences to the families of those who were murdered and best wishes for recovery to the wounded. Police believe that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu received gifts from businessmen that were worth hundreds of thousands of shekels. Attorney General Avichai Mandelblit approved the launch of a criminal investigation against Netanyahu involving two cases last week, which led Netanyahu to slam the media reports of allegations of fraud and bribery. Police are waiting for the Prime Minister to agree to a date for questioning in the case. In his response, Netanyahu said, All these scandals have turned out to be baseless and so will the allegations being published in the media now. We keep repeating, this will come to nothing because there is nothing. Haaretz reported that the allegations in this case is nothing compared with details of a second investigation whose details have the potential to be, quote, earth-shattering. Hamas, the internationally recognized terror organization in charge of the Gaza Strip, has just given its operatives around the world new safety guidelines. The directives come in the aftermath of the assassination of a Tunisian engineer said to have been the mastermind behind Hamas's drone program. The issued suggestions include covering one's tracks and keeping information private, even from one's closest circles, which is pretty much standard operational procedures for any and all espionage activity. Operatives were also directed to take safety measures while traveling, including not using their real identities and choosing locations carefully where meetings are held. Israel has not yet responded to the allegations, that they killed Mohammed al zawari but Tunisian President Asebsi said the country's investigation into the assassination indicates that foreign hands did carry out the attack. The Mossad specifically has been blamed for the assassination. The new savings plan for every child introduced by Finance Minister Moshe Kahlon is creating a problem among U.S. Israeli citizens, forcing parents to choose a bank savings plan for their children that pays low interest or a plan that could potentially expose them to double taxation. Under Kahlon's plan, parents will be able to open a savings account through the National Insurance Institute for any child under 18. The state will then make monthly deposits of 50 shekels per month into the plan. Parents can choose whether the account is opened in a bank or a kupat gemel, a deferred savings plan. The problem is that Israel's kupot gemel are considered by the IRS as a passive foreign investment company and are thus subject to PFIC rules for reporting taxes. Thus, they must choose the bank account which has lower yields or pay double taxes on their kids' savings. A team from the Israel Institute of Technology has developed a device that from a single breath can identify diseases such as multiple forms of cancer, Parkinson's disease, and multiple sclerosis. The machine is still in the experimental stages, but has a high upside that it will eventually be able to determine, in a non-invasive diagnosis, serious illnesses. The scientists created a prototype for the machine that demonstrates that a medical theory first proposed by the Greek physician Hippocrates 2400 years ago is true. The theory that certain diseases leave a breath print on the exhalations of those afflicted. The machine called the Nanos tests breath samples for the presence of trace amounts of chemicals that are indicative of 17 different illnesses. Developers of Nanos are reporting an 86% success rate in their trials, but the device would need to be at least 99% accurate before it can be used in clinical diagnoses. That's all for now. Tune in to ILTV for our main daily broadcast playing after this. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you tomorrow with our morning briefing from Israel at 8 a.m. Eastern Time.